In this video, I'll be reviewing and showing you how to use a really cool Blender add-on for creating things like chain mail, chain links, cloth and fabric weaves, scales, and other types of micro meshes. And the add-on is simply micro mesh. And I can definitely recommend this Blender add-on. It's very easy to use and it gives you a great result. So the add-on creator contacted me and asked me if I wanted to try out their add-ons. So thank you for letting me try out and review these add-ons. And I do have an affiliate link to the Simply Micro Mesh add-on on the Blender Market. The link to that is in the description. So if you purchase the add-on through my link, then I will earn a small commission, and that's a great way to help support this channel. And you can also check out the other Simply add-ons through my other affiliate links in the description if you'd like to check out some of his other add-ons. All right, so here I am in Blender, and let's first enable the add-on. So once you download the add-on, we're just gonna click here on Edit, and then let's open up the Preferences. Then we're gonna click here on the the add-ons tab and then we need to install the add-on so we're going to click on this install button and then just locate to the folder where you've downloaded the zip file of the add-on you can just select the zip file and then click on install add-on and then if you don't see it right here then you can just search for it so if you search for micro you can see there is the object simply micro mesh so you can just check mark that to enable the add-on and then just make sure you click on the save preferences button so that this add-on is always turned on in your future blender projects now there's one more thing that i want to do in blenders you user preferences and that is to add the micro mesh library in the asset browser so let's click right down here on the file paths and then open up the asset library and you can see I've already added in some other asset libraries so the micro mesh add-on actually comes with some assets that you can download so you can download the micro mesh library blender file in the product file and then once you've downloaded that file, just put it somewhere on your computer and just leave it there. And then to add the micro mesh library into the asset browser, you can click on this plus button right here. And then Blender's file browser will come up and you can just locate to where you've saved the micro mesh library Blender file. And it is here, you can't see it, but it's in this folder. So then I can click on add asset library. And then you can double click right here to rename this if you want to. And then again, once you've set this up, just click on the save preferences button so that you'll always have this set up in your future Blender project. So let's now click on the X here to close the user preferences. So I'm now going to select everything and I'll just hit X to delete. And I now want to open up the asset browser so I can access the models. So I'm going to click here in the corner and I'm going to drag over and this is going to split the window and I can click here to change the editor type and let's change this to the asset browser. So then if you click right up here, it's going to show you all of the different asset libraries that you've added. I've added in a bunch of different asset libraries, but you can see right down here, I have the micro mesh library and then I can just close the side panel. So here are all of the different weave types. And so you can use this to create different things. Like you could create like some chains, you could create some chain mail, and there's also like some chain links and many different things. So what I'm first gonna do is create a chain mail shirt on a character. So what I'm gonna do real quick is click and drag to bring this out. And I'm gonna click here on all of the libraries that I've added, and I'm gonna add this human base meshes. And so these human base meshes are actually something that Blender officially released on their website. So if you'd like to download these free character base meshes that Blender has created, then you can check that out with the link in the description and you can add it as an asset library. So what I'm just going to do is drag in this body male character. And then once I've added it right here, I'm going to click on add collection and I'm just going to turn off the instance and then I can just close this. So let's just click right here and I'm gonna change this back to the micro mesh library. So what I'll do is hit the tab key to go into edit mode and I'll deselect everything. And I'm gonna hold down the alt key and just select this here and then hold down the shift and alt key. And I'm just gonna select all these loops here. And then I can also go into wireframe and I'm just gonna select all of these loops here because I basically want to select all the spots where the shirt would be because I'm making a chain mail shirt. I can also go here, box select this. All right, so I've now selected all of the faces of where I want the character's chain mail shirt to be. So I'll now press Shifty to duplicate. Then I'll just hit the escape key so it brings it back to its position. Then I will press the P key and I'm going to separate by selection. I can hit tab to go back to object mode. Then I can just select the chain mail shirt here. I'll hit tab to go into edit mode. I'll press the A key to select everything. And then I wanna scale it up a little bit. So I'm gonna hit Alt S. So hit Alt S and I'll hold down the shift key to make my movements more sensitive. And so by hitting Alt S, it's gonna scale the object up along the normals. So along the direction of the faces. So I'll just scale that up a little bit bigger, click to place that, and then I can hit tab to go back to object mode. And then using the object context menu, I'll shade this smooth. So we now have a separate piece and this is where the chainmail shirt is gonna be on the character. Character. 
So I'm now going to press the N key to open the side panel. And if you scroll right down here, there's going to be a Simply Add-ons tab. I'll just click on this to open up the Simply Add-ons. And then right here, it's going to show you all the different Simply Add-ons that you've enabled. So if you've purchased more of the Simply Add-ons, then you'll get more of them here. I'm going to open up the Simply Micro Mesh. So then just select the object and you can click on Add Micro Mesh. So if you now zoom into the shirt, you can see that it's adding those little chain pieces along all the faces. Now, I don't want to actually be able to see the shirt object. So right here, we have this visibility, and I'm going to turn off the source mesh. So this is going to hide the shirt so I can just see the chain mail, but I can't actually see the shirt. Now, right down here, we have the user interface, and there's the statistics. So if you want to turn this on, it'll show you how many faces and vertices and edges that it's using. There also is the source mesh. So if I turn this on, I could choose to subdivide it, and I actually do want to subdivide it because I want to add a bit more detail. So I'm going to open up the source mesh just to preview that. I can just click on subdivide, and so that's going to subdivide it. So now you can see it is more detailed. And then I can click here just to hide the source mesh settings. And then we also have on the user interface, the micro mesh. So if you click on this, it's going to show you all the main settings. So I want to make these bigger because if I zoom in really closely, you can see they're not actually connecting. So right here we have a scale. So I can hold down the shift key to make my movements more sensitive. And then I can drag this up and I want to drag this up so that they are connecting just like that. And now this already looks a lot like chain mail. So there's so many different settings that you can play around with to change how the chainmail looks. So we already talked about the overall scale, and then there is a minimum size for the randomness and a maximum size for the randomness. So if you want some of them to be a bit smaller, you could. For chainmail, that doesn't really make sense, but for something which is a bit more organic, you could change that. There also is this auto scale here, and so if I turn on the auto scale, it's going to change all the chain links depending on the size of the faces. So if I like zoom in right here, you can see these faces are smaller, so now that is smaller, but then like right over here, it's a bit bigger. Although for this, I actually don't want to turn on the auto scale because I want them all to be the same size. So I can now just turn the scale back down to adjust that. And then if for some reason the rotation axis is messed up, you can actually change the axis right here. So there's X and there's also Y and Z, but for this character, the X one is the right one. And then you can also manually rotate these. So I have the X rotation and the Y rotation and the Z rotation. So this is super helpful if it's just not pointing in the right direction. And then there's also this random rotation. So I can rotate this around and it looks much more random. Now that kind of looks too random for chain mail, but chain mail kind of would be bumping around a little bit. So I might just turn the randomize to one and that looks a bit more natural. Now there's also a distribution setting right here. So on default, it's set to faces. So it's going to distribute the chain links on the faces. However, in some cases you might want it to distribute it on the edges instead or the vertices or also the corners. Um, but for, I think for most things, you probably will just leave this at faces, but you can change that if you need to. So now now let's change the chain type. So there are many different chain types using the asset browser. So once you set this up, you can just open the asset browser and then you can choose between some different chain types. So a few ones that I'm going to show you is like this one here. This one is pretty cool. So I'll drop this one in and I can scale it up just so it's a bit bigger, just so I can see it in the viewport better. I'm also going to add this one here. I like this one for adding like chains and I also want to add some scales. So I'm going to go right down here and we actually have this really cool scale here. It kind of looks like a shield. So I'm going to drag and drop this in. I'm also going to use this one right here. So I'll drag and drop this one in as well. So then I can click back on the shirt here and actually change what mesh it's using. You can choose that right here. So you can click on the exit and then if you click here, it's going to show you the different objects or you can click on the eyedropper and you can choose a different one. So I'm going to choose this one and now this one is kind of similar, but it has a bit more detail. Let's also look at another one here. So I'll delete this, click here and I'm going to choose this one instead. So that's pretty cool. Although this wouldn't really make sense to be on a shirt. This would make more sense for if you had just one single chain and you want it to be maybe hanging from the ceiling, you could kind of have one chain going down. Uh, let's also click on the X here. Let's also choose this one as well. So this one is more like a fabric. And then also I could like turn the randomize down to zero because I don't really want it to be random. So now it looks like he's wearing a weaved shirt. Let's also try the scales. So I'll click on the X here, click on the eyedropper and choose the scales. And I can turn the scale up just so that overlaps. And there we go. That is super cool. So this would be really cool if you're creating like a lizard or a snake or a dragon or some type of creature which has scales, or if you're trying to make like some scale armor, this works really well. You can see it looks just like the scales on a dragon. And then if you don't want these objects here to actually show up in the render, you could just kind of move them down out of the way. Or what you could do is go here to the side panel 
and open up the outliner. You can open up the collection and you can see here are these different objects so I can select them. And if I click right here to show the filter, I can click on this button here and this is going to disable the objects in the render. So if I click on that, now I could click on the eye here and the eye is going to hide it from the view. However, it'll still show up in the render. So I also need to click on the camera icon and that'll just hide it from the render. So now it's basically invisible. They're still there and I can still instance them on the object here with the add-on, but they're just hidden from the view. So I'll just hide that character for now and I'm also going to add a cloth object. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to mesh and I'm going to add a plane and then I can hit the tab key to go into edit mode and then using the object context menu I'm going to subdivide this and I'll subdivide it quite a few times so it's very detailed. And then in edit mode I'm also going to select a face here. I'll select this top face and then if I go right over here to the object data properties. I'll open up the vertex groups. I'll click on the plus here to add a new group and then I can click on the assign button. So now I'm going to click right over here to the physics properties and I'm going to add cloth physics and I will open up the collisions here and I will turn on the self collisions and then I can kind of bring this object up and rotate it over and then I also need to add the pin group so I'll open up the shape here I'll click on the pin group and then click on that vertex group that I added so I can now press the space bar and just let that simulate I'll press the N key to open the side panel let's also shade this smooth with the object context menu and then with this object selected I will add micro mesh and then I need to go back here to the starting of the timeline and I need to play this again and just let it simulate so now let's click here on the user interface let's click on the micro mesh so we can see that and then I can go here to the scale and let me just turn up the scale so that they are connecting and then also I want to hide the actual cloth object so here on the visibility I'll turn off the source mesh now you can see that doesn't really look right because you can see that they aren't connecting right here so there's a few things that I can do for this so one thing that I want to do is click click here to get rid of this object and then instead I want to choose this one here so I'll click on the eyedropper and then click on that object right there now if I zoom in you can see they're still not connecting so let's just turn the scale up to make it a bit bigger so that they are connecting and then here on the rotation X value I'm gonna rotate this back just like that and now you can see on the edge here it looks like a link of chains and now I can play this and it looks like some animated chains or I could also change this to one of the fabric objects. Let's click on the X button, click on the eyedropper, and we could choose this one here instead. And then I need to play around with a few of the settings now that it's a different object. So I'm gonna drag this back to the starting now, and I'm gonna zoom in here, and I wanna change the rotation. So let's turn the rotation back to zero. Now you can see it's connecting. And then I can also turn the scale up just a little bit so that they are actually connecting. All right, so now we have like a cloth object with this weave, and now I can just play this and let it simulate. And we have a cool fabric object object with a weave. And then to edit the material, you can click right over here on the shading workspace and you can just select the object here and it has actually added a material on default. So if I just go into the material preview to preview this, you can see it's already added a base metal material on default. If I click right down here on the drop down, I can just select that metal material. And then if you want to, you can edit the material. So I could make this like a gold material instead. That might look kind of cool. Maybe make it a bit darker and I can play around with the metallic value. So if I want to make it look more metal, and you can just change any of the material settings if you want to. So that is how you use the Simply Micro Mesh Blender add-on. It's a really great blender add-on for creating many different types of micro meshes. So again, if you'd like to purchase the add-on, then you can definitely check out my affiliate link to the add-on on the Blender Market. And if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, then I'll earn a small commission. And that's a great way to help support this channel. So I do appreciate your support. So I hope you found this video helpful and thanks for watching.